Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Attack. Today we're going to talk about the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Projector. This is a newer technology of projector that I've been really interested in, and I got some time to spend with it. Before we dive into the actual device itself, I wanted to talk a little bit about the technology because this is something new on my channel here. I haven't talked about projectors before, but I will be soon uh, a little bit because it's interesting to me. Media consumption is part of the whole technology process now. And with our smart devices, we're, you know, controlling our Apple TVs or our Google Chromecasts and all this stuff. And so we're sending our information. Maybe we're watching a YouTube video and then we want to put it up on the screen. We're utilizing our technology more in a roundabout way these days. And it's very important that we kind of understand all the different things that are available to us. So in the past, I had a little theater room. It was kind of like my main system, but and rather than having a TV, I had a projector and a nice big screen, and it was super fun to watch movies. But back in the day, you had to have your projector mounted pretty far back in the room because it was the LCD bulb type of projector where it has to cast that image clear across the room. And uh, if you're going to have a very big screen, you had to just move that projector back even further. And it was kind of a bummer because you had to run a lot of wires, and it was just a Real pain. You had to point some remotes forward and you had to point your other remote up and back. It was just a weird experience, but you know, it was nice because you can watch a nice large movie. You also had issues viewing your image during the day on a day like today when it's a little bright outside. You definitely couldn't use your projector because it just wasn't bright enough. And so with the laser 4K projectors that are coming out now, they can be mounted right up against the wall pretty much on your entertainment center. And uh, there's no cables that have to be ran any farther than they would have been if you had a TV. And so the process is just really great. So I've got a couple of more use cases and thoughts and then we'll dive into to the Vava 4K itself. So mounting TVs to your wall typically mean cutting into your wall and running some cables up. If you don't want to do that, a 4K projector with the short throw is great because you can just shoot that image up on the wall, no cables, very cool. Now, if you wanted to do a theater room or something like that, no more running cables clear across the room, up through the ceiling or whatever to get to your projector because everything could be nice and up against the wall. Another issue is audio. So I didn't set up all of my nice audio equipment and ended up getting rid of it because I imagined my little kids, and they're bigger now, so they wouldn't do this, but when my kids were little, poking the speakers and kind of ruining the speakers, and so I just got rid of them. But with this Vava 4K projector and some of the other ones that are out, a lot of them have like a built-in sound bar that's actually really good. And so there's even some solutions that can be solved there. So the whole process is just better, I think, with the technology advancements. Um, but another thing that's really cool is that since your projector is now mounted close up against the wall, if somebody wants to get up and walk out of the room, it's not, their head isn't gonna be, you know, uh, shadow displayed in the image. Those are things that were annoying about projectors of the past because, you know, the image is being shot clear across the room. So that doesn't, uh, the obstruction issue isn't a thing anymore. Um, these projectors are easier on the eyes than a, a standard TV because it's bouncing the image off of a screen and then to you rather than shooting the image straight at you and so you're not getting LEDs shooting straight at you or whatever technology your television is it's reflecting it and bouncing it back to you which is a little bit better and so there's some things there that I think are benefits as well so the ultra short throw technology is really neat because all of that can live and exist up against your wall, which means not having to run cables because you can just simply plug everything right into the back of the projector, which is gonna be sitting right on some sort of a platform along with your media devices and maybe any of your audio devices that you have sitting there as well. So pretty cool. So why the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Projector over the other ones? Well, there's several that are out right now, and the Vava really came in as a surprise because it's priced really well and it has some really good specs. So there are some things that I really liked about the projector and things that maybe I felt could have used some improvement, but the projector overall was super impressive. The first time that I used it actually was outside. Uh, we were having a movie night before it started to get cold in the area that we live. We wanted to have a movie night outside, and so I set it all up, and all we needed was the screen, the Vava projector, and the, I plugged an Apple TV into it, and that was it. 
the Vava projector's audio was good enough to where everybody can hear the movie and it sounded really good without me having to bring out any extra speakers. And this was just something we did in our front yard. But the image was so bright. It was really, people were asking me, some of the parents of uh, my kids' friends that came over were asking me, what in the heck is this device? Like people just aren't aware of what this is because they're used to a projector having to be far back. That's pretty much been the standard for the last, you know, whatever, 50 plus 80, 100 years or whatever since projection systems have been around. And uh, so with that, uh, people were really confused and wanted to know more about it. So the Vava can support up to 150 inch screen, which is pretty big. And so you need to have some area space on your wall for that. Uh, obviously you can push it up closer to the wall and shrink that image down, but the image is only gonna get to be so small. I had to get kind of creative with where I was gonna place that in my home because my home has walls with some different angles and it's a little weird. And so it was hard for me to find a place in my home to position the 4K projector and get the image size to actually fit. So uh, up to 150 inch screen, but it also will go up to 4K and it also has support for HDR10, which is nice because a lot of movies these days are coming with that HDR depth and being able to view that in a projector scenario is really nice. You're not gonna get that on some of the older style front uh, LCD project projection projectors. It also has a 1.5 million to one contrast ratio. That's something you're used to seeing on higher end televisions or maybe even your higher end gaming computer monitors. The contrast ratio is important because a smaller contrast ratio means less depth in that. And there's a lot of depth in movies these days and TV shows. And so as you have a lower contrast ratio, your image is gonna look flatter. It's gonna look much more dynamic with that higher contrast ratio. Now the life of a product like this is also super important. You're gonna get 25,000 hours of use out of the bulb that is in this. It's a different type of bulb. So rather than it being like a standard type of bulb, like in a, a typical front projection, and those bulbs typically cost a couple hundred dollars, you're gonna get a ton of lifespan out of this 25,000 hours. And so you, you'll get more than the use of the machine's cost out of this before needing to replace it. And then of course it is a user replaceable item, so you can replace the bulb out of there with one uh, when that time comes. But 25,000 hours is a long use. Now, as far as ports go, it has three HDMI 2.0 ports on the back of it. It has a USB port, it has an ethernet port, and then it also has digital audio out. So if you have a system that you're going to implement this with, maybe some sort of an audio system, you can go digital out, which is really nice. That would be my choice right there. Or of course, if you're using your system to do also your HDMI switching, you could just run HDMI out of that uh, receiver and then right into your projector. But having those three channels is really nice. When you're viewing the main home screen on the Vava projector, then you can easily switch between those HDMI channels, see what's displayed on them, and uh, just get between them really quickly using the remote that came with the Vava. The Vava projector also has Wi-Fi Ethernet built right into it, so if you wanted to connect to it directly for things like software updates or to utilize the app store that comes available on the projector itself, because it does have like an Android version of software installed on it, so there are some apps that you can install depending on the services that you use. You can just run those right from within. It's not nearly as good as like a smart TV these days. So I don't believe that you're really gonna be able to use the projector as a standalone. You're probably gonna wanna plug in either your Apple TV or a Roku stick or something like that so that you have uh, the services available that you would expect and that they stay up to date but you can actually still connect Wi-Fi or Ethernet right directly into the projector itself. Now, one of the things that blew me away was actually the audio quality that came out of the projector. Now, I was told and I saw in the specs that you know it has Harman Kardon audio and it sounds good. And I thought, okay, great, but that's just a projector and I've heard audio out of projectors before, it's horrible. But the audio that comes out of the Vava is actually really amazing. When we did our outside uh, movie night, I didn't need any additional equipment. The audio right out of the front of the device was pretty fantastic. 99% of the time when we're watching movies inside on the Vava, it's very nice experience. Of course, we're used to just the audio out of the typical TV that we have. 
And so the audio that comes out of the Vava is way better than what we would get out of a typical TV these days. Of course, if you have a full audio system, that's gonna be the best experience. But if you don't wanna go that far, you just want something that's gonna produce a decent audio, it is on par or exceeds most sound bars. The only thing that would probably improve that is maybe having an external subwoofer or something that you can connect from the back of the projector itself. So the Vava has a very simple remote for getting around the interface, the user experience of the Vava projector. As I kind of alluded to before, the user experience isn't that exciting. It does have that kind of older Android TV feel that I don't think is really being supported so much anymore. So that is not it's kind of lackluster, but the remote definitely gets you around the user interface pretty quickly. Obviously, in most situations, we'll be connecting to some sort of an external media device, and so we aren't going to need the projector's remote for much more than powering the device on, maybe controlling the audio level. Depending, of course, when I have my Apple TV connected, I can control the audio right from the Apple TV. But then also for focusing, it is an electronic focus, and so you would use the control for that. It's a very simple process. I was also very impressed with the actual build of this device. It was very solid. I didn't feel like I was going to damage it by just pulling it out of the box. And considering, you know, that it's laser technology and it's 4K and whatever, and it's kind of heavy, I was really concerned initially. I was pulling it out of the box very carefully. And as I started inspecting it, I thought, you know, this is a device that I can have out. And if my kids were playing in the living room and one of their little, you know, plastic balls hit it or something like that I'm not going to worry about it so much as a lot of other projectors that might have like a physical bulb inside of it. And so the build quality I was super impressed with and I wasn't near as worried about having it sit out as I would have been with a lot of other projectors or even with a standard television. So I was also pretty impressed with the setup process. Like I said, the first time I used it was when I was having people over. I didn't test it or do anything ahead of time. I just, you know, by faith just plugged it in and turned it on and just went through a little bit of setup and I was done in no time. It was an extremely easy setup process. Of course, most projectors are kind of plug and play, but with something like this that has a little bit more going on, I thought to expect more in the setup process. It was really easy to get going and we were up and going in no time at all. So my overall experience with the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Projector was really good. I am super impressed with this product. I'm almost a little bummed that I didn't try one out earlier because I, you know, I just bought a TV recently to replace the TV that broke and I probably would have rather gone with the Short Throw Ultra 4K. It does good in, you know, of course, dark situations in a dark room. It looks amazing, but it's also bright enough to use during a, a relatively bright day without closing all of your windows and that was something that I didn't really expect. And there is a lot of advancements that have happened over the years since I built my first theater room in, uh, in screen technology. The screen that I had was relatively old. It was the one that I originally had, so it's several years old. It doesn't hold as well, and so it's just not the best screen that's out there. There's a lot of technology advancements in screens that also improve the ability for that screen to grab and capture that light so that you can view a lot better looking of an image on days that are bright out like it is today. The ease of use, I would give it an A because it was just super simple to set up. Going and utilizing that projector all the time is really no more difficult than turning on a TV and then of course turning on your external media device. It's a very simple process. The power up process is pretty quick. It's definitely much faster than an old style bulb projector. It typically powers up and is ready to go. It does take a little bit longer than a standard type of TV that we are used to these days but it's not nearly as bad as an old style projector, which is another reason why I didn't end up going with like a theater earlier on was because my family, they turn the TV on, they want it to start working immediately. They don't want to wait a minute or two or three for a projector to warm up and the Vava warms up and is ready to go in well under 30 seconds. The image quality is also really amazing. The first time that we used it, we plugged in an Apple TV, which is only the HD version. So we were just watching HD and we watched the new Aladdin movie and the new Aladdin movie looked amazing and this was outdoors with light spill coming in from uh, street lights and stuff like that cars were driving by sometimes it just wasn't the best scenario for having a movie night yet the movie experience was amazing and like I said at the beginning of the video I had people coming up and asking me 
questions about the projector and uh, parents were really intrigued. And even my neighbor from across the street came over and was like, what in the heck were you watching that movie on? It was amazing. So uh, the image quality is great. The audio performance was just over and above what I expected. Of course, I was expecting not much because of the old style projectors, but the audio experience was really good out of the Vava. It's really loud. It's really clear. Yes, I wish that it had a bit more bass, but you, you can't put too much bass within a projector. It's gonna start rattling your image. So you would need some sort of an external subwoofer. I'll link to the one that I actually own that I used in my office that worked out really well for me. So I know it's good quality. I haven't yet used it with the Vava projector, but I know it's a great subwoofer. The brightness was blowing me away. I was super impressed with it and at times had to turn the brightness down. So I'm really impressed with how bright this projector gets. Now there are two areas in which I think that the projector could be improved and this might just be a limitation of the technology and not the Vava itself, but this, these were my experiences. The first would be the actual color accuracy. Now being that I make videos and movies myself and of course I'm a photographer, color accuracy is very important to me. And though the image does look really good and it looks better than any projector that I've ever utilized myself, the color accuracy still just wasn't as good as I would expect if I I was watching TV on a 4K television. And of course, it's gonna be a little bit different than uh, what you would expect on a TV. It's a different process here. Everything is different, but it's amazing in consideration as far as what it's doing. It's just not as good as I would have liked to see. And then of course, the user interface is something that could have been better in this product, but it just wasn't really that good. Of course, if you don't go too deep into the projector's user interface, it's very easy to, you know, to switch between HDMI channels and whatnot. But the rest of the user experience in the projector is kind of lackluster having the uh, Android TV app store or whatever in there, all those apps looked worn out and not updated and I would have never installed or utilized any of them. Uh, I just, I, who knows, some of those could even have, they could be old and outdated with malware, I just don't know. So I wouldn't utilize the Android system that's in there. I would just leave it alone don't even log into it with your uh, Gmail account. I wouldn't even mess with it at all. I would just plug in some sort of an external media device. Uh, we just recently got the Apple TV 4K because now with the projector, we can go 4K and it looks amazing. So that's really good. And then of course, there's also the Roku. There's, you know, Amazon has their own uh, connected devices. And then there's, there's plenty of other devices that you can plug in and pull in all of your media that are gonna better interface with the smartphone technology that you have in your home and maybe even the other smart technologies that you have in your home. So I recommend going that way and not even messing with the user interface that was built into the Vava at all for more than just powering on the projector, choosing your HDMI, and then maybe uh, focusing or changing some of those display type of options in the setting menu of your Vava 4K. So that's gonna do it for this video. I was super impressed with this product, and I think for the price, you really can't go wrong. I know the price is coming down on TVs. I've seen TVs for you know under $400 that are 4K, and so yeah, the price is coming down on televisions quite a bit, and the technology is becoming more and more just cannibalized by whoever can get the lowest price. But when it comes to wanting something that is different, something that is superior as far as not only screen size, but the quality and just the overall experience, you're definitely going to want to take a look at the Vava 4K. I've got links down in the description below, not only to the projector itself, but to some of the other things that I mentioned in this video. Clicking on those links definitely helps support our channel here. So I appreciate when you do that. But that's it for the Vava 4K. If you have any questions for me, ask down in the comment section below. I did my best in this video, being that it's the first one of me talking about projection type systems to answer any questions that I would have had uh, prior to this whole process. And so I hope that it was informative. If it was, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel here as well. I'll definitely be talking about different projectors and stuff in the future, as this is a, a area of interest of mine, and I hope it is for you too. So I hope to See you back in the next video. Until then, take care.